Hi, this is Ahmed Alogaili and Manuel Perlakis presenting case 166 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating the utility of invasive coronary physiology, both for determining the need of percutaneous coronary intervention, but also for optimizing the final result. The patient was a woman who presented with exertional angina. She had a previous turn in the diagonal and she underwent a coronary CT angiogram that showed a focal severe stenosis in the middle LED with a stent in the diagonal that was too small to assess patency. And this is the report from the coronary CT. This is the clearly report showing that there's a significant lesion in the LED. There is a severe, more than 70% stenosis in the LED. And uh, this is the... Uh, reconstruction, and what we're seeing here is that there's 73% stenosis in the middle AD that appears to be ischemic. This is the outline of the LAD. There is actually some disease further down, which we will discuss about later on. And in terms of composition, there is some calcium, but it's not too bad. This is the calcium shown in blue. In terms of the lesion length, it seems to be fairly short, about 12 millimeters. This is uh, from the vitreous system, looking at the NGO-MIP. This gives us a good sense of the coronary anatomy, um, RCA, as well as uh, left main. There is um, disease in the middle AD right after the takeoff of the diagonal branch. And uh, this is also very useful for determining the optimal projection for visualizing the lesion, which is uh, an LA cranial about 36, 37 degrees. Also, measuring the aorta, the aorta is normal size with uh, a 32.7 millimeter distance from the aortic wall to the ostium of the left main. So we use the standard EBU 3.5 guide. And also, the CT can be used for measuring the length, which measured about 13 millimeters, with a lumen that was 2.1 distally and 2.4 millimeter more proximally. Although, the lumen can sometimes underestimate the size of the vessel by coronary CT. So here we are now on the coronary angiogram, and sure enough, there's a significant lesion in the middle AD after the takeoff of this diagonal branch. There doesn't seem to be any other significant lesion in the remaining of the LAD. However, there is some disease in the origin of the diagonal branch. Different projection, again, disease in the LAD with uh, some um, uh, disease in the diagonal. The circumflex system is okay. But in the RCA, there's also some intermediate lesion in the distal RCA to the ostium of the PDA. So what to do next? And uh, although we did have the coronary CT, we had not had we had not done the heart flow analysis to be 100% sure about ischemia. So decided to do physiologic assessment first of the right, which was okay. On the pullback, uh, there's obviously not optimal normalization. However, there is no significant uh, pressure gradient on the right coronary artery, and then we check the diagonal with an IFR of 0.93. So there is no significant disease in the diagonal. There's some drift uh, happening there as well. And then in the LED, the IFR was 0.85, and there was a nice uh, focal step up corresponding with that area of stenosis uh, in the mid LED. So fairly clear cut. We predilated uh, with a 3.0 millimeter balloon. We did use a wire in the diagonal just to mark it uh, and also to protect it in case the stent came back to proximal. Placed uh, a 3.0 by 12 millimeter drag eluting stent that again expanded um, fairly well. And then we typically image afterwards. However, here we had the pressure wire already on the table. We decided to use it to assess the result. So we advanced the pressure wire through the stent to the distal LAD and did the repeat measurement. And this is where we were surprised because now we're seeing the IFR not significantly improving. It was 0 0.85, 0 0.86, and now it's 0 0.88, so no significant improvement. But when we did the pullback, what we're seeing here is that there's still a step up, and that corresponds to the distal area of tortuosity. So this is the area here right next to the septal branch where there was the remaining step up. So what to do? Again, the patient is still ischemic, so we decided to stand it. 2.75 by 15 millimeter drag eluting stand, and that provided a nice result. 
and the LED actually, um, the IFR was 0.96. We can see on the pullback, there is a minimal diffuse disease, no significant stenosis. So nice final result. And there are several potential lessons from this case. The first one is that coronary CT can help determine the presence of coronary lesions as well as ischemia. It is not always perfect as we've seen in this case. Coronary physiology remains the gold standard for determining the need for performing PCI in patients with uh, stable coronary artery disease. In this case, uh, it did so significantly a hemodynamically significant lesion in the LAD without significant disease in the diagonal or the right coronary artery. Based on the results of coronary physiology, we did place a stand in the mid LAD, distal to the diagonal, and then we used the pressure wire again to assess the result, and to our surprise, there was still significant gradient, IFR was 0.88, and there was a step up further down in the LED. So there was a tandem stenosis that was subsequently stented with an improvement of the IFR to 0.96. So having these focal step ups is very useful because if it's diffuse, that means there is diffuse disease and one would have to stand the entire vessel to have improvement. However, if there is a specific focal step up, that suggests focal disease that can be successfully treated with stents. Thank you.